And if you are going to do the work of the Lord, you need conviction. Conviction. Thus says the Lord. Many years ago, I remember, when we just started in deeper life, and we believed in the Bible that says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Of course, there was opposition. But without conviction, standing and saying, here is where we stand, we wouldn't have been where we are today. I remember many years ago when we taught evangelism, personal evangelism, and we told all those young people, and we said, go ahead and evangelize. Without conviction, that would be impossible. I remember many years ago when we began to teach our people that sickness is not from the Lord. That he says, I am the Lord that healeth you. And that God will not give his children sickness. I received some opposition in some quarters. But you know, without conviction, a man will not be able to continue. I was in Britain just uh, last month at the um, Assemblies of God Home Missions. And I was given opportunity to preach a number of times on church growth, different areas of church growth. And um, I talked on no divorce and remarriage. Of course I knew before I ever got there. And some people had even spoken to me individually about ministers divorcing their wives and taking new wives. And had spoken to me about marrying people that had been divorced in the churches. But I have strong conviction on what the Bible says. And I went ahead and preached with strong conviction. Now, if I didn't have conviction, I wonder, if I say what I wanted to say, the people may not invite me back again. But what if you are not invited back again? I have enough to do in Nigeria. If I'm not invited back again, that gives more opportunity to go to many churches that are even saying, why remain in deeper life alone now that we're having conferences among churches? Why not come to our church? If they don't invite me there, that gives me more opportunity here. And because of that, I gave them the conviction. The other thing that makes preachers afraid is that, what if they don't give me offering? If I tell the truth. But who needs an offering in any case? Because if we ruin our ministry for the, case, for the sake of an offering, you yourself will be an offering on the altar of the world. But if you have a strong conviction and you know that this is thus says the Lord and you stand upon that conviction, then the Lord will carry you through and you will not fail. But do you know, instead of those people not inviting me back again, they did. In fact, there are more invitations than I can honor. Because I told them what I have learned from the Bible. I got to a Bible school in Britain, and there are so many of them there. And um, the Christianity over there is uh, different from the Christianity over here. And uh, while I was speaking to all those students, I said, now you are going out. And you are going to preach the gospel. And then I told them about Bible stand on restitution. You stole somebody's shirt. And you are still wearing that shirt. And then you go out preaching the gospel. And that shirt is still on you. Return his shirt before you give him the gospel. And then when I finished, some of them were asking questions. I said, that is the Bible. And eventually when they were asking too many questions, their principal rose up and said, well, students... It's only that you are asking the questions because you have not been taught in this school. You will see that this minister from Africa, he referred to the Bible in everything that he said. That is, the only problem is because you have not been taught. And they kept quiet. But suppose I had no conviction. We must have conviction. And whatever you are doing in the church, make sure that you are not going to please men. You are not going to please the Canaanites or even the Israelites. You will say, O oh Lord, you have called me and I will not disappoint you. Do you know if you take that decision, God will back you up. The power of God will support you. And you will never fail in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are becoming too quiet. Have I stepped on your toes? Are you still happy with me? Yeah. You must be happy. We are men of strong conviction. Now, 
Therefore, that is why that God told Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. Many of the things that God told Joshua to do, if he didn't have courage, how will he do it? They had just been defeated in Ai. And he went before the Lord and said, Oh Lord, why is it this has happened unto us? And God said, There is sin in the camp. And he began to find out. And it was Achan that had taken that sin. What were they to do? God said, Get rid of him. That takes conviction. In the church, to discipline people that sin in the church, it takes conviction. That's why some churches don't grow. Because there are some people over there, they will commit adultery in the church, they commit fornication in the church, and then when you want to touch them, and you want to say, well, elder, you have been an elder in our church, but now look at what you did. He said, yes. How about David? Didn't David commit adultery? And you say, are we going to fill the whole church with David committing adultery? Now, we're going to take the eldership away from you. Ah, he said, if you do it, I will break this church. You think you're a pastor? I will show you I'm an elder. And then you sound the opinion of some elders and you say, Elder, did you hear the story of uh, so-and-so elder? And they say, yes, we heard. And then you go to another person, did you hear this? Yes, we heard. I'm thinking that I want to take a serious stand against that elder. He must be disciplined. And the older elder said, if you do it, young man, this church will break. Ah, elder, who has been in this church for 50 years, you want to discipline him? Okay, go ahead and break the church. All the property of the church will take everything away. You will go out of this church empty handed and go and start another ministry. And then, uh, then you see the elder that committed the sin. And you say, hmm. Anyway, God will catch you. <laughs> Pastor is not able to catch you. It's only God that can catch elder. It takes conviction. For you to understand that if Satan is standing behind them, God is standing behind you. And that if you go ahead and do the will of God... They may shout, they may cry, but you will overcome. Amen. And you will stand like the rock of Gibraltar. And you will say, here is where I stand. In this church where God has made me a pastor, Achan must be disciplined. Amen. You know, when you do that, first of all, in the first week, some people will be going around, maybe they will be gossiping. But you are on your knees praying. You are saying, God, vindicate yourself. Glorify yourself. And eventually, all those people, if God needs to give them a dream, if God wants to just smite them down like Saul on the way, of, to, to, on the way to Damascus, God will do something. They will come and bend the knee before you. But it takes conviction and courage that this is where I stand in Israel. Joshua needed to understand that if they brought in another part of traditional worship, from all the things they learned from Canaan, Joshua must stand. Not only dividing the land to them, but making sure that the religion of Israel remained pure. And it will stand against idolatry, coming from any direction. But sometimes, in our churches, you are a pastor in the church. And a young man will go to a fellowship somewhere and come back to the church to introduce something. That has a smack of idolatry. Something that is not completely New Testament. And while he's doing that thing, you want to talk, but he's a youth pastor. He forgot that you put him there. And all the youth in that place, they forgot that you put them there. And then uh, eventually you call this youth uh, leader. And you say, youth leader, I'm the pastor in this church. The way you are leading these uh, young people, you are leading them astray. Look, you brought in this idea, you brought in this idea, you brought in this idea. And this young person might say, yes, pastor, old men, uh, they won't understand. But today, today is the time for young people. And that's what they're doing in America, doing in Britain, and doing all over, all over the world. Therefore, that's what we're going to do. 
And you tell them that according to the Bible, and I'm the pastor here, this will not be done. And he says, ah, Pastor, if you uh, do that, if you take that stand, I'm going to take all the young people. Before it happens, I will tell you. I'll take all the young people and start another fellowship with them. Pastor, what are you going to do? Are you in control? To the point you'll be able to say, young man, if you do that, God will teach you a lesson. And it will show you that there is a pastor here appointed of God. And that he will back up the pastor he has appointed. And therefore you have control. Because you are watching over their souls as somebody that will give account. But you know, if we don't have convictions like this, there will be no courage. And they will be pushing us here and there. Not only that, sometimes you need courage with people that are outside the church. Just yet this year, some months ago, a uh, commissioner of police, uh, or a forgotten, senior police, I've uh, forgotten the title now, sent for me. And some constables came to Bagada. And he said, a police, the policeman is calling you at the station. Now, I said, Pastor, I have authority. So I said, where is the letter they brought? I sent somebody to them. I said, go and ask them. Did they bring a letter in their hand? And the person I sent uh, said, uh, no, they didn't have a letter. I, said, I didn't even come out to see them. I said, go and tell them to go back to the police station that I am pastor and I'm a responsible person. If they want me at the police station, let them go and bring a letter. That's authority. And uh, they went... I, after they went, they told the other man that uh, that man is not as simple as we thought. <laughs> he said we should go and bring a letter. And eventually I went there at, uh, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. When I got there, I, I saw the person and I said, uh, that's the, their boss. I said, uh, they said you are, you are calling me. I'm so and so. Oh, he said, yes, that sit down. Then there was another policeman there. And I went with two other people from our church. And I sat down and I relaxed. Because I had not done any criminal thing. <laughs> I am a preacher of the gospel. And so he said that, uh, well, we have received reports in our station here that your church is... Uh, preaching, uh, being born again as if all the other people are not born again. I said, excuse me, is that what you called me for? He said, uh, yes. I said, are you, is it part of your responsibility to interpret the Bible to the preacher and tell the preacher what to preach? I thought you called me for something good. That I am so and so. I teach that ye must be born again. And that when you are born again, your life will change. And that we are the people changing the country. That the work you have left undone, you hear all about that unrest in the north. You didn't go there to go and make a change. My said that is bringing peace in the country. You are calling me for question. He said, I am sorry. I said, no, don't be sorry. I said, don't be sorry at all. But I thought you were calling me because uh, something serious had happened. That yes, I preach being born again. And we preach without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Oh, he said that uh, we heard that you make some people that when they belong to your church, they shouldn't go to other church. I said, is that news? That don't you know when somebody is at the morning service in a church, by the fact that he's in the morning service in my church, he cannot be in the other church at the same time. I said, yes, that is true. Then he said, I'm sorry. And then he gave me his address. And then at, at last said, well, be praying for me. I said, you need prayer. <laughs> Without conviction. If you don't have conviction, they'll be dri dribbling us here and there. They'll be dictating to us what to do. But when you know that, by the grace of God, you are a child of God and a minister of the gospel. You will stand. And believe in God, you will stand. Amen. And if we will have the same courage and the same conviction, God will honor your convictions also in Jesus' name. Amen. I have found in my own uh, life, 
and in the ministry that God has given me that the courage and the conviction matters a lot. And sometimes I've taken some decisions and taken some stand that temporarily people will think that, ah, that will ruin that ministry. Just some four years ago, a white man got interested in what we're doing in deeper life. And he said that uh, I booked for you to go to America, to go to Canada, and go to a lot of places. And uh, you will be able to minister over the radio and over the television. And uh, they will, this is uh, work that we're doing in Nigeria. Nobody knows about it, but I will uh, do it that they will know. And I said, well, that's all right if that is the will of God. And we booked the flights, and we got to America. And we got to CBN, Patrobot C's um, television um, station. And uh, we had some 10 minutes uh, discussion on a round table. Then we went to Toronto. Then we came to Tulsa. In Tulsa, we were discussing. And um, this man started discussing money. And uh, if this happened, then he'll get this money. I was surprised because he didn't tell me all that before. And then I told him that I'm a preacher. I'm not a businessman. And then he got angry. Then I looked at him and I said, the Bible says I shouldn't go along with an angry man. And I'm standing on that. And I said, I'm going back to Nigeria from that place. And we still needed to go to a lot of other places where he had booked down that, you know, they will know me and know my ministry. He didn't know that I was serious. So the following day, we got to the airport, and he put down his ticket and checked to the next place we should have gone on our itinerary. Then I put my ticket down, and I said, check me to on my way back home. He looked at me. He thought I was mad, because he felt that he could do something for deeper life, and that we couldn't get what he would do for us in any other way. But I'm following God not following man. And I came back to Nigeria. Later he wrote to me, because nobody ever did that to him in his life. But do you know, all those places we would have gone, God has brought everything about without him. I've gone back to CBN on my own because of the way God worked it out. And I've been on their program. I've gone to Canada. I've been on their program. I've been um, to Canada for another program, five programs, all in a series. Television, all free. Here in Nigeria, we pay. Over there, we don't pay anything. And then came back to America on radio station in 66 radio stations, all free. Not only that it was free, messages that are preached in other places in cases, they offer to those people on the radio station, and the people who are applying for those messages. If I'd gone along with him, I would have been his servant. He would get angry, or because I'm a black man, a mistake for a white man is perfection for a black man. I would have been a servant, just following after him, whether I was keeping to the scriptures or not. But I said, promotion does not come from the United States of America or Britain. It comes from the Lord. And if you will take your stand on the word of God, those people will come and learn from you. Because it's not only deeper life that can grow large. Your church also will grow large. Amen. God will support any man, any woman, anywhere that will stand on the word of God. And I want you to put God to test. We have heard of D.L. Moody. We have heard of Spurgeon. We have heard of John Wesley. We have heard of Billy Graham. Those of you who are sitting here, God can make you like that. Amen. It is not their white skin. It is the consecration of their heart. And if you will tell God from tonight, well, not, this is not just deeper life now. God is no respecter of persons. What he has done with anybody, deeper life or no deeper life, is able to do with another person. And if you will say, oh Lord, whatever it takes, you are telling me to be courageous and I will have the victory, I am going to be courageous, you will have the victory. It may take some months, 
It may take some years, but if you are consistent, you will have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. And no enemy shall be able to stand before you. Amen. And nothing will be able to defeat the work that God is doing in your own life. Amen. It's between you and God. God can have another Joshua today, another Elijah today, another David today, another Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego, another Peter or Paul. If we will tell God, Lord, I am available. God is wanting to do great things because he's a great God. Great people don't enjoy doing small, small things all through the time. God is a great God. He wants to do great things. And God doesn't want to be limited to just one denomination doing great things. God wants the opportunity in your own church to do something great. And if you will open the door and say, God, I am a candidate for a great ministry. And whatever it takes, I will do. You will see that God will raise up a great ministry through you. I believe he's going to do it.